In November of 1964, the Kinks released what would become one of their biggest career hits. You've heard the riff. It's gritty, it's raw, it's powerful. Now, how did they get that sound? Who inspired this groundbreaking track? And what's with this rumor uh, that Jimmy Page, yes, the Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin fame, actually played that famous guitar solo? We're going to get to the bottom of that as well. I'm Andy Fenstermaker, and this is Poetic Wax, a weekly music history series where I dig into the record collection I started back in the 1990s to share the stories of bands, albums, and songs from within. And this is the story of the Kinks' hit track, You Really Got Me. Part of the British invasion wave, including acts like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, with their song You Really Got Me, the Kinks were a bit different. Made mums and dads go, oh, turn it off, it's so it's evil. To understand how You Really Got Me came to be, we need to go back to the early 1960s, a time when Britain was in the middle of a cultural revolution. It's hard to imagine now, but back then, the Kinks were just one of many bands trying to make their mark on a scene dominated by the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. They were one of many other groups riding that wave of British invasion. But for brothers Ray and Dave Davies, life wasn't just about following trends. They wanted to carve out their own identity. Ray, the older of the two, was the thinker, the songwriter. He had a talent for capturing everyday life in his lyrics. Stories about ordinary people, heartbreak, and longing. A commenter said it best when reacting to my video recounting the history of the Kinks track David Watts. Ray was the best at telling a complete story in three verses. Some say You Really Got Me was about a real person, a girl he was infatuated with in his youth. Others think it was an embodiment of the raw emotion and energy that young love, or even more so lust, can inspire. Ray himself, well, he's always been a little bit mysterious about it, and that ambiguity has kind of kept the mystery alive. Like on David Watts, Ray wasn't just writing about some abstract feeling on You Really Got Me. Davies found inspiration one night while performing with the Dave Hunt Band. There was an attractive girl in the audience that piqued his interest. According to Ray in Anatomy of a Song by Mark Myers, When we finished, I went off to find her, but she was gone and never returned to the club. She really got me going. Written in about mid-March of 1964 on the piano in the front room of the Davies' home, the same piano that they had played when younger growing up, Ray had noted that when he wrote the song, he, quote, hadn't been writing songs very long at all. It was one of the first five I ever came up with. And that's from the Kinks all day and all night, day-by-day -day concerts, recording, and broadcasts, 1961 to 1996. While Ray was the lyricist and came up with the structure and framework for the song, it was Dave who brought the song's unforgettable sound to life. Dave loved playing around and experimenting with his guitars and amplifiers, seeing what he could do and what he could create. He had picked up this small Elpico 10-watt amp with a 7-inch speaker and a knob for volume and another for control. He also had this 60-watt linear amp and a Vox AC30 and an old radiogram. One afternoon, while in an experimental mood, he gathered all his amps and took them downstairs. He plugged his guitar into the Elpico and then fed it through the linear amp, taking the Elpico wires, fixing jack plugs to them, and then wiring the radiogram and AC30 through the Elpico. Flicking on the switch, he heard something amazing, this crackle and distortion, but he had overloaded the mains and that just lasted a moment before the surge of electricity threw him across the room blowing out all the power in the house. But that sound before the explosion of electricity was absolutely glorious, and this experience led to an epiphany. Just what if he slashed that speaker in the Elpico? Might that recreate the sound? I just got a razor blade and started to cut the cone of the speaker. I don't know why. And I plugged it in, and it made a, uh, that amazing sound. 
where I'd cut the speaker cone, the edges vibrated against the outside shell of the speaker, unleashing this visceral, jagged roar when I played my guitar. Then I plugged it in through the input socket in the AC30, which made the green amp act as a preamp, which made it even louder. I had created this whole new sound. That one act gave us one of the most distinctive sounds in rock history. That thick, dirty distortion that particularly snarls at you. It would go on to shake the foundations of music from that point forward from punk rock to heavy metal, and far, far beyond. While the fuzzed-out, distorted sound had been created before, you really got me, really helped pull that sound into mainstream popularity. But it doesn't end there. After watching the documentary, Jazz on a Summer's Day, the brothers were struck by two tracks it featured, Chuck Berry's Sweet Little Sixteen and Jimmy Dufry's The Train and the River. They could see the genius in Chuck Berry's ambition, and they loved the chord progression in the latter. Both served as inspiration later on when fooling around at home. Tinkering around on the piano at home, Ray came up with the riff, the You Really Got Me riff. Calling his brother over, he played it with a few fingers, which prompted Dave, who was toying around with his new amped up sound, to give it this three finger power chord treatment. They had created the foundation for the song. A few days later, Ray had the lyrics. Before this, distortion like that really wasn't a thing. Dave and the Kinks helped change the amplified sound. You Really Got Me wasn't just another catchy tune. It was raw, primal, exactly what the music scene didn't know it needed. The recording process, too, was far from smooth. Their record label, Pi Records, wasn't completely sold on the band's potential yet. Their first two singles had kind of flopped, and they didn't want to front money to re-record this new track. But Ray threatened to not perform or promote the single, while their then-manager, Larry Page, refused to publish the recording. You see, the original was soft and slow. It just didn't have that same feel especially when you compared it to their live performances. Pi stood its ground, and it was the band's management that ended up caving and funding the band's session. With the new recording, they hit the sweet spot. They captured the raw energy they had been chasing, and you could hear it. The power, the intensity, it's, it's all there. The track runs just over two minutes, but it's packed with a kind of energy that still grabs you the moment it starts, as if they condensed everything about youth, rebellion, and passion into this tiny explosive track. About the experience, Ray would later say, I was floundering around trying to find an identity. It was in 1964 that I managed to do that, to be able to justify myself and say, I exist, I'm here. I was literally born when that song hit. Then you had the tumultuous relationship between the brothers themselves, one of the most famous sibling feuds in rock history, perhaps only topped by that of the Gallagher brothers from Oasis. At the time, the Kinks were still young, raw, and unpolished. But they were determined to prove themselves. You've got to understand, we weren't professionals. We were learning as we went along, trying to capture the energy we had on stage in the studio. It was harder than we thought. For years, and I mean years, people believed that the iconic guitar solo on You Really Got Me was not played by Dave Davies, but by none other than Jimmy Page, the future guitarist of Led Zeppelin. Where did this rumor come from? Well, at the time, Jimmy Page was one of the most in-demand session musicians in London. He worked on hundreds of tracks, often without being credited. So it's no surprise that fans heard the fierce solo on You Really Got Me, and some thought that might have been Page's handiwork. Despite both Page and the Davies brothers denying the rumor, it still lingered. Maybe it's because Jimmy Page did play guitar on some of the Kinks' tracks, he was a session guitarist on their debut album and credited on I'm a Lover, Not a Fighter, and I've Been Driving on a Bald Mountain. In fact, Dave Davies himself has noted in his book, Living on a Thin Line, that Jimmy Page was in the studio the day they re-recorded You Really Got Me. A number of session musicians were kind of waiting around in the background just in case they were needed. 
Dave, never one to hold back, has been especially vocal about this. In fact, he's gone on record multiple times saying that not only did he play the solo, but that the suggestion that anyone else did feels like an insult to his contribution to the band's sound. The rumor may persist in some circles, but the truth is clear. Dave Davies played that solo and no one else. Let's circle back to the mystery girl behind You Really Got Me. The question remains, who was she? Was she indeed real or just a figment of Ray's imagination? Fans have been speculating about this for decades. In the early days, some believed the song was inspired by a real woman that Ray Davies knew in his youth, a girl he was intensely infatuated with. Others felt the song's lyrics reflect more of a universal feeling, young love, longing, and desire. The line, you really got me now, you really got me so I can't sleep at night, feels like something anyone can relate to, and an infatuation far beyond a fleeting moment, the glimpse of a girl at a show. People always want to know who she was, but honestly, I can't say. Maybe she was real, maybe not. I like keeping that part a mystery. For a long time, Ray had been tight-lipped about the inspiration behind the song, preferring to leave it open to interpretation, and maybe that's part of the song's enduring appeal. The mystery keeps it alive, giving fans something to speculate. But music is always up to interpretation. That's part of the beauty of songwriting. It can have a very individual and personal meaning, regardless of the meaning intended by the songwriter. And the inspirational depth behind a song can come from a fleeting moment, expanded and juxtaposed over a more universal feeling or experience. Ray's answers over the decades have ranged from cryptic to playful. In one interview, he mentioned a girl he saw at a club, as I noted before. That fleeting moment I talked about earlier in this video. In another, he denied any specific person at all. So, was she really real? Or was the song simply an expression of emotion without a real-life muse? The truth is, uh, we may never know. When You Really Got Me hit the charts in August of 1964, it didn't just chart. It exploded. It shot up the chart, reaching number one in the UK by mid-September and making waves across the pond in the US. This was the Kinks breakthrough moment. The song that would catapult them from a struggling young band to rock legends. And it was the re-recording that did it. I mean, they were literally ready to throw in the towel had they not re-recorded it. But it wasn't just about chart success. You really got me marked a turning point in rock history. That distorted guitar sound, courtesy of Dave's slashed speaker, was unlike anything heard on the radio before, at least to that magnitude. It was raw, aggressive, and it helped pave the way for genres like punk, hard rock, and heavy metal. Artists from The Who to Jimi Hendrix credit the kinks with influencing their sound. And let's not forget Van Halen, who famously covered the track in 1978, bringing the song to a whole new generation of fans. It was a blueprint for the future of rock music. The influence of You Really Got Me is hard to overstate, but no matter how many times it's been replayed, it never loses its power. It's timeless. From their earliest days as a scrappy London band to their place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Kinks have left an incredible mark on music history, and among their cornerstone pieces is You Really Got Me, the song that started it all. Even today, now more than six decades later, the impact of You Really Got Me can still be felt in modern rock music. Bands continue to cite the Kinks as an influence, and that riff, that riff just never gets old. As for the mystery girl, she was indeed real and not just a creation of Ray's imagination, but we may never know if it was about her or if it just served as inspiration for a more universal feeling. Though her identity will forever be a mystery, she will always be tied to one of the most important songs in rock history. Regardless of who she was, one thing is for sure. You Really Got Me will always have us. If you have enjoyed this journey into rock history, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon for more weekly deep dives into the stories behind the music we love. Next, let's dig into the inside joke behind that kink song, David Watts.